Today's CGTV broadcast brings you a story on a student who stepped up after, after facing a family tragedy, a special event held here at our school, and a special inside report on a major issue facing all of us. Hey CG, today is Monday, April 23rd, 2018. I'm Brianna. And I'm Mara, and we have your CGTV broadcast brought to you by Sugar Threads. Every year, host a mock car crash here at our high school to show the dangers that happen when we make destructive decisions. Leanna Sequera and Anna Puderbach give a quick preview of the event. On Thursday, April 26th, Ake, Abusive Choices Hurt Everyone, will be hosted by Sad Club and Key Club. Here is some more information about the event. AIC is just an event so that our students can really see the impact of bad decisions and what they actually do. AIC means ab abusive choices hurt everybody. Uh, students come in, they sign in, and then the tour guide will take them around to different classrooms that show different scenarios, such as like uh, party rooms where there's a student getting roofied, and then there's abusive, uh, we talk about abuse and we talk about suicide and drunk driving and they'll go to different classrooms to talk about those and then at the end they go out and they'll see a mock car crash and how uh, the consequences co that come from that. Um, there's new events such as the vaping, vaping scenario and then other scenarios among that such as the party one. Um, students should participate to help bring awareness to the destructive decisions that can happen to anybody and that are in everyday life. I think it's a really good experience to see like what choices they should be making and like how if they go down the wrong path how they can like visually see it through like um, scenarios. Come out to the high school this Thursday at 6 o'clock to attend AIC. Many students have jobs however for one freshman the job is deeply personal especially after a family tragedy. Brianna Stewart Allen and I bring us a feature on the e freshman Evan Kiefer. At only 15 years old, freshman Evan Kiefer helps manage Glens Valley Feed and Seed, a company selling various types of animal seed. So uh, our business is Glens Valley Feed and Seed. Um, it started up with my dad and my mom. Um, it was our third business, and uh, we sell any kind of feed, like uh, poultry feed, horse feed, rabbit feed, like any of that. In 2016, Evan's dad passed away due to a fatal car accident. My dad passed uh, about a year and a half ago, and it was really hard for my family. Um, we've been trying to uh, make things work because my dad was the main entrepreneur. He was the one who brought home the bacon and stuff. So uh, that left with my two uh, brothers, a younger and older, and me to help my mom out. Evan currently takes care of one horse, chickens, and ducks, which are just a few of his responsibilities. On um, an average day working, uh, it's tough. I mean, I have to come home first, uh, feed the animals. It's even worse with cows. Um, and then afterwards, I have to go over to the store, uh, help me with my mom. And uh, mainly, I do inventory, like I said. Um, I have to make sure all the bags are in the right place. And there are about 80 pound bags in each pallet. And there's a lot of pallets. So uh, I have to lift a lot, which puts strain on my back. But I mean, I have to keep on working. I make sure uh, everything is in order. I'm, I'm like a 15 year old manager for everyone, which is kind of weird, but uh, just have to step up. I take pride in what I do. I try to strive to be just as great as my dad. My dad was an amazing person, an uh, amazing father, and I try to be like him every day. I, I'm, of course, not just like him. Uh, it's hard to uh, take on the store uh, with my mom, and it, there's a lot of hardships in there, but. Uh, Mostly I, I carry on and I enjoy what I do, so. Last today, CGTV has a report about a health issue facing many of us. Today we bring you the first part of a two-part series on vaping. CGTV has a special team that has been investigating vaping at Center Grove, whether or not it is dangerous and whether or not it is a problem. Out of 70 times that we checked random bathrooms during the school day, we found 37 instances of students vaping, which is 52%. But vaping is definitely something that every single week, um, if not more, there's reports um, in our office. I think it's just because it's new and it's, it's just one of those things that kids want to try. So 
Um, it's it's been an issue here, um, but it's been an issue everywhere, even in the in the community. So from adults all the way to kids under the age of 18. One reason vaping has grown in popularity is because it is often advertised as being safe and harmless. Common vaping sites spout statistics like e-cigarettes are 95% safer than smoking. One thing that is confusing is that e-cigarettes are marketed toward former smokers. Those ads say that e-cigarettes and vaping are better alternatives to cigarettes. Kevin Bogenschutz, a physician's assistant in a pulmonologist office on Indy's West Side, believes vaping has some positives, but for people, and especially teens, who don't transition from smoking to vaping, it can be hazardous. Is it safer than smoking? Yes, that's what it seems to, you know, seems mm -hmm. to be. Is it a good alternative? You hate to say it's a good alternative, but it's a better alternative than smoking actual cigarettes. However, it is not a good alternative for people who start vaping after being a non-smoker. A study released in March from the American Academy of Pediatrics found that chemicals in e-cigarettes have been linked to cancer-causing substances, or carcinogens, and are particularly dangerous for teen users. Although e-cigarette vapor may be less hazardous than tobacco smoke, our findings can be used to challenge the idea that e-cig vapor is safe because of many volatile organic compounds we identified are carcinogenic, cancer-causing. Messaging to teenagers should include warnings about the potential risk from toxic exposure to carcinogenic compounds generated by these products. They all have different mixtures of things. So the one I think we'll get to is the diacetyl. That's one that you have to look out for and different things that can cause inflammation, different flavorings, different mixture of flavorings from what I could tell all have different components in it. Adolescent e-cigarette only users have levels of five volatile organic compound toxicants detected in their urine in quantities up to three times greater than in match controls. That means people who vape have three times more of the amount of these cancer-causing substances in them. An interesting article came out about this one. So there's different types of white blood cells. One of them are monocytes, mm -hmm. and it can be an inflammation marker. So the inhalation of the e-liquid can increase these monocytes. So it's basically an increased biomarker of inflammation fibrosis, that COPD, asthma, it can kind of exacerbate all of these problems. And this is by the flavoring chemicals that we talked about before, what's inside of them. And these things might be, hey, this is safe for, for um, you know, ingestion, but as far as inhalation, heating up the liquid and putting it in your lungs, mm -hmm. that's where people are a little more skeptical about it. And it's the flavorings that you really have to watch out for because these are going to increase the inflammatory markers. One chemical is called propylene oxide, which is an extremely flammable substance that is listed as possibly carcinogenic to humans and used to make plastic. Another chemical is crotonaldehyde, which produces toxic vapors at room temperature and is used in the preparation of leather tanning and even in chemical warfare. Researchers at Harvard has found that 39 out of 51 e-cigarette brands contain diacetyl, um, as well as two similarly harmful chemicals um, that we have on here as well. And 92% of the e-cigarettes had a couple of these chemicals present. Cancer and bronchial conditions sound scary, and if you are sitting there with asthma, this is particularly dangerous. So for example, I've got a lot of younger asthma patients here. So for these patients, do I want them putting anything in their lungs to increase their inflammation markers? Absolutely not. They're on inhaled um, steroid medication in order to decrease the inflammation, help them take full inspiration. So putting this in that can increase their inflammatory markers would not be a good idea for them. Vaping is not harmless, CG. For those of you who do it, you need to know the risks. Today's story was one of a two-part series that explores the consequences of vaping. Tune in on Thursday for the next part in our series. That's all we have for you today, CG. Stay tuned for your general announcements.